goal with? My goal is to become a millionaire without owning a shop, which is easy. Because I'm, you can be a millionaire being a barber. Mm-hmm. That don't mean you got to cut hair. We back at it, man. Another episode from A to Z. I got a special guest in the building. This is my partner. This is my dog. This is my barber. We hoop together. We argue. We do all that type of stuff. We go get lunch and talk about business plays, man. Talk about stocks. Talk about life. Just um, a good person to talk to, hang around with, motivate in the gym. Uh, we got to get a session in because we try to get a session yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. left me hanging two times. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get a session in, yeah. man. I got none other than uh, Darius Epkins. Y'all know him as Butter Bean or AKA Butter. Uh, but I'm going to let you introduce yourself, man. Hey, <laughs> man. Everybody, my name is Butter Bean. You know, some people know me by Darius, but most of everybody know me by Butter. You know, I'm a fitness trainer and also a barber. Fitness trainer and barber. All right, dog. So. You know, uh, for the people who don't know, man, let them know where you're from. I'm originally born from Minnesota, but I was raised in Chicago. I see. I didn't know that. Yeah. So you were born in Minnesota? Minneapolis. Did you stay there or just so born I, there? So I, I was born there, and then I moved to Chicago and been living. Then I used to go to Minnesota to visit my father. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's still up there? No, no. He, he uh, God bless the dead. He just passed a couple oh, of weeks, ago, about this week ago. Wow. He was in Arizona. Yeah, it's all good. It's Dang. All good. So... Do you got any other family in Minneapolis? Uh, a few cousins, but yeah. everybody else stay in Chicago. You go back? I ain't been back in a minute. <laughs> oh, about four, five years. That cold boy be hitting you. Nah, but it's cold in Chicago. Uh, that cold be hitting you. I ain't, uh, oh, yeah, I, I was going to say, that cold in Chicago is something else, Hey, bro. I didn't got used to this Florida weather. Yeah, that cold in Chicago. I'm, I'm from Florida, so it just, but I'm from Miami, so anything, yeah. anything uh, 60 and below we just like uh, yeah, I'm straight. Really, sixty nine and below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> below sixty nine, no we like, oh, it's cold outside. Yeah, I yeah. need a jacket, cold. He from uh, Virginia, ain't it? Yeah, so yeah, he it get, get a little cold. He don't, he don't, he don't mind this weather. Yeah, but no, nah, it's cold. So all right, so Minneapolis and Chicago. Tell me about Chicago life. Man, it's really about game bang. Either you gonna play sports or you gonna game bang. Mm-hmm. And when I grew up, I was a little butter to everybody else. So even if I tried to get out in the streets, they wouldn't let me. So they'd be like, nah, you're going to keep playing basketball. Mm. So that's all I did was play basketball and make money. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So where did the name butter come from? Because see, this is what I thought it came from. Because you jump or wet. Nah. Yeah, it used to, yeah, it used to be you wet back in the day. Yeah. Going. His butter got to jump on him. <laughs> yeah, can't leave. Yeah, I yeah. can't give him but two, <laughs> a little space, and he gonna pull Come up. On. So I thought the name came from that because that they like no, butter. The, now. The, the nickname really came from when I first was born. I weighed twelve pounds and no ounces, mm. and they used to call me my aunt named me Butterball. Mm. And so as I got older, cause I was real fat, light skin, yeah. I was real fat. Then they just dropped the ball as I started getting older. It's called butter. Yeah. Did that? Is that how, like how long did you carry that weight? Like, man, I carried the weight until I was about. One, two years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it wasn't long at all. Oh, I didn't know if you was like butterball at 10. No, 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 no. Oh, so no nah. butterball nah, at nah, 10. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was, I was, I was slim by about two, three years old. Okay. I was slim. All right, so we in Chicago, either hooping or you playing or you in the game. Right. So what kept you out of the game? Just from the older people. Like, mm-hmm. nobody would never let me do what they did. They was like, nah, because you're going to make it out. Yeah. And that's been my whole story since then. That's usually how the hood go too, though. Like if you if you decent, especially if you playing sports, mm-hmm. and they know you decent, mm-hmm. then you good. You get a pass, right? You right. know what I mean? It's like nah, y'all let him slide. He hoop or he play football right. or whatever. You know, hey, bro, go to school. Right, right. Don't be out here with right, us. Right, you right. know what I mean? So playing sports was that like uh, the thing? Like was it was it a lot of competition in Chicago? Man, that competition was crazy. Yeah. Like that's all we did: eat, sleep, and hoop all, all day, day long. Yeah. All day long. Those are the days, cause that's all I did. Right. And now I I be praying for a hoop session. Boy, it's hard now. Every, every blue moon we yeah. get a hoop session. Yeah, there. it's hard now. So hooping, of course, was the thing. We both kind of grew up on that same thing. It was either hooping. Or being out here on these streets, mm-hmm. and I knew that wasn't for me. Right, right. Cause I just seen people getting locked up, getting shot, getting killed, mm-hmm. robbed. And I don't want none of that. Right, right. I'm gonna go over here and hoop. Right. Then hooping, I get to travel and stuff like right, that. Right, right, so I'm gonna stay over here right. doing this. Right, right. So in hooping, like, um, did you learn any lessons? Like, man, I learned so many lessons because, like I said, being the youngest, 
They used to always beat up on me on the court. Mm -hmm. They used to always talk crazy to me and just do me any kind of way. So I had to work on my game, especially if I wanted to play on the teams. Yeah. See, back then, we didn't play 21 in Chicago. We played 32. So mm -hmm. it wasn't no free throws. It was straight one-on-one -on -one action. One -on -one. Straight to 32. Whoever get 32, that's how you win. Oh, hold on. so we cause we played twenty one. Yeah, so we ain't played that. You make a shot, then you go to the free throw line. You get the. It shoot wasn't again. no free throws. It was straight. You getting it from the muscle. So if you make the basket, you get the ball you back. Get the again. ball back yep. at the top of the key. Yep, and, and you start and, over. And they check it up. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever get the thirty. That's a free fall for real. Uh, yeah, boy, it was tough. Yeah. So did you like growing up? Cause I already know we both competitive. Right. Right. We both talk a lot of trash. Right. Right. But out like okay. Your instance, you were the younger, and the older kids, you wanted to make sure you go out there and they ain't beating up on you. Right. My case, I was smaller. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I was the oldest in my household. Mm. So I held leverage in my household. Like, I'm the oldest, but out here in these streets, I'm smaller than everybody, all mm -hmm. of that stuff. So I had to be 10 times tougher, mm -hmm. and then I couldn't let my mouth outrun my hand. Right, 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 <laughs> you know right, 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 right. So it got to that point. So, like, for you... Was there? Did you get into altercations and stuff? Oh, I got into altercations all the time. Yeah, I used to be fighting because at the end of the day, you ain't gonna just try me any kind mm -hmm. of way. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like then in Chicago, they used the word like you know how people down here say "fuck nigga." Yeah. Down there, you say "call a nigga bitch." That's fighting. Fighting words. You're fighting off rip. So you just gonna be bumping. You get crazy talking, scoring, and you say "bitch ass nigga." They that's fighting. That's fight word. Right. Yeah, that's the same. So thing I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, yeah. Quick, one of them old nigga hit me in the mind one time. It, I mean, I I know what it is now. Yeah, yeah. So out there, are you knowing the lingo, knowing the words, how to how to go out there and survive, basically on that on that blacktop. Right. But that blacktop is still like the streets. Right. Because you got people coming from different neighborhoods mm -hmm. and stuff. Did that? Did you ever see like gang stuff while y'all hooping? Did they keep that away from the parks or? Well, to be honest, like when I used to go to different parks, you'll have a few people. You know, depend on what side of town you on. Mm. You know, they they know you ain't gang banging, but you know you'll get some people around and say, "Cause I'm from the west side, mm. so how we lingo communicate with each other." We say, "What's up, G?" Mm -hmm. But reality, that's called that's gangs. That's a gangster disciple. But I may meet somebody from the north. Or they may be a black stone. And like I had a partner, he was like, bro, don't call me G. Because he a black he stone. He a black stone. And, and I like disrespect. disrespect. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I had to change my lingo because in Chicago, you don't bounce sides, different sides of town. You mm -hmm. either stay on that side or if you, you better know somebody on the other side. Mm -hmm. So it really wasn't no altercation like that, but just little stuff, you know, where people would be like, hey, you, you need to watch what you're saying. Gotcha, gotcha. What, what year did you, so how long were you in uh, Chicago before you came Jackson. Jacksonville, man, I was in Chicago all the way up until ninth grade. So ninth grade, y'all transitioned to Florida. Yes, and came straight to Jacksonville. Yes, what was that like? Like it's two totally different. I hated here. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. My I moved here my ninth grade year. My mama, cause my sister was in the military, mm -hmm. so my mama, uh, me and my mama got in the car. We drove here, and. Uh, I got here after first semester. I moved back to Chicago. I hated mm, it. That was so I moved back. College. I That's moved back to I was. Chicago. I ain't moved back because I was on that scholarship, but I was trying to go home mm -hmm. as much as I could. Right, right. So I just I couldn't understand Jacksonville. Yeah, it was. It, it was, was too slow. It was slow. Yeah. It was. I didn't understand that. I remember the first time going out, like at the crib. We might we may leave the house about one forty five two to go to the club. Mm -hmm. Cause the club ain't closing about six. Right, right, right. You leave the house at one o'clock, one forty-five here if you want to. The club closes at two o'clock. It's, it's over. over. That's it. Right, it's over. So going to the clubs, I had to. I was like, what? The two o'clock. The last call at the bar, one fifty. Like, what's going on? Right. This is like a whole new environment for me. I didn't understand it, and I just the, even the restaurants being closed mm -hmm. early. I didn't understand none of that. So did you like have? I know going back to Chicago, being there for a month. Or were you staying there longer? No. So when I moved after my first semester, I moved back to Chicago and I stayed until about like the end of my junior year. Mm -hmm. Then I came back to Florida. Oh, so you went back to Chicago? Back to Chicago. In high school? Mm -hmm. Not to get here from ninth? 10th. Then came back like the middle of my junior year in high mm -hmm. school. And what school you went to here? Uh, I went to Sandalwood. All right. So you were hooping at Sandalwood? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For varsity. Yeah, yeah. It started. No, not my junior. I got you. Yeah. 
I wouldn't even supposed to make the team. Why you say that? Because they already had his team. So when I moved back, you know, people were looking at me like, who is this nigga? Mm, and yeah. so I'm already locked in. I'm about to take somebody's spot. Right, right. So I made the team, made the varsity, but, you know, he was big on the seniors. Gotcha. So I ended up, he couldn't deny me, so you're going to be on the team. Matter of fact, he sat me down in his office and said, you can go anywhere in Jacksonville and you will start. But since I got so many seniors, you have to ride the pine. Mm. So what did that do to you, knowing that you, you he telling you that, like, shit, anywhere you go, you're going to start, but here... You got to ride the pine. Did that mess with your mental, or did you really use that I, as that, fuel? That, that, that just made me work even harder. Yeah. Because I'm in my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to transfer because I don't know nobody. I'm just going to work harder. Mm. I'm just going to keep working and keep working. I never had that quit in me. Yeah. So in high school, then, what were you like like as a student athlete? Were you the the, the class clown? Were you the... <laughs> yeah, I know you yeah. like the joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we the same. Like You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how... My first... I, I remember transferring to um, a ninth grade. I went to this school in Miami called Southridge. And then I tra- we transferred to this school, to a homestead in in, Florida, in Miami. And the first day I transferred, I'm talking about the first day I walk into a history class, they just start ranking up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, oh, this what y'all? Okay. Right, right. So I just start five back. Right, I'm, right. I'm talking about I walk in class, I'm standing up, the teacher introduced me. And they just start right, firing off right, jokes. Right. I'm talking about killing it. And then I just start firing back. And then before you know, everybody friends now, this, right, that, and right. third. Did you have that type of stuff going oh, on? Oh, yeah, man. I was a class clown. Yeah. I was. I ain't going to cap to you. I was a class clown, and I was a ladies man. <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> I was on hey, a mission. That was me, though. I wasn't the class clown, but I hung with the class clown. Right. Like, my, my one of my friends, he was the class clown, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, never stopped joking. And we became cool. And then just hanging around him, people always thought I'm the jokester too. Right, right, I was right. really laughing at all his <laughs> right, jokes right. he just made, and then just being around. But the ladies' man thing, yet yeah, because I did not want to be out of school to miss the girls. Like right, I was like, right. nah, that was my not, biggest thing yeah. was play basketball, have fun in school, yeah. and try to see who I could talk to. Nah, I feel you. <laughs> what, what about grades? What type of grades? man? That's the only thing I regret in high school is getting better grades. Mm-hmm. I was just you know then we had a two point. Three to two point four, you were straight. Yeah, that's all I by. Right. I was just getting by. No, nah, I feel you. That same thing happened for me too, man. Just out here just having fun, especially in high school. I was just having fun, playing basketball. That's it. Doing whatever I gotta do to get by. Right, right. And making it happen. Right, right. All right, so in high school, eleventh grade, twelfth grade, you graduate, right? Mm-hmm. What were your plans at graduate? Like, what did you have aspirations? To do? My plans was to go to college and play basketball, mm-hmm. um, and figure out a way to make some money, mm. which I was making money in high school, uh, selling CDs and cutting hair. Okay, so you sold CDs in high school, mm-hmm. bro. We got a lot in common. I sold. I ain't sell CDs, but I made my own mixtapes. Mm. I used to rap, right? <laughs> <laughs> Me and a couple partners. <laughs> And we would sell the mixtape, but we actually sold a lot of different mixtapes. I always thought I was going to be on 106 in part, but yeah. I never make it to 106 in yeah, part. Yeah. So selling the CDs and cutting hair was your hustle mm-hmm. in high school. In high school. And that was here. Mm-hmm. So when you started cutting hair, was it like um, just little tape-ups here and there? Or no, that? man. I used to, because that's when everybody didn't have no computer. Mm-hmm. And I had a computer. And um, I steal my mama CDs and burn them. Mm. And so while I'm cutting you, you remember how people used to write down their mix, yeah, thing, yeah, what, yeah. mix songs? I write them down, download the song. I used to use Napster. Napster and, yeah, 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 all that. that. Joke, yeah. And I, and, wire. Right. So while I'm cutting you in the bathroom, I'm going to make you a CD. I used mm. to sell CDs for like 2 for $5. Yeah. And then I'd cut you for $10. So you're getting a good uh, $15. Yeah. In I, one session. Bamming. Yeah. I had to die at my mama's house. Bamming. I know, because you probably was the man. I want some music. I want yeah. stuff. Let me go how that butter. Yeah. And I get a haircut yeah, at the right, same time. Right, so I'm right. coming out clean, and, my, and I'm putting this thing in my right. in my um, CD player at the time. We had the little, whatever you call it, the Walkman. What, yeah, and yeah. All that other stuff. Yeah. All right, so cutting hair, is that like, did you start thinking like, okay, this is what I want to do? At that uh, time, or I, just a hustle still? Uh, at that time, I just always wanted to cut hair. So mm. I was like, I was just, it was just a hustle. Mm. And making making as many CDs as I possibly can. <laughs> That's all I did. I started out, I started out a plastic bag. Yeah, selling the CDs. Just putting them in the bag and selling them. Mm-hmm. 
Taking them to them. the school? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, And then writing them, writing it down, and then I made enough money. Because you couldn't get music how we get it now. You just type right. it in on your phone, whatever. Right, but right. you had to, if you wanted your own little playlist of different music, and you ain't, like you said, you had a laptop where you could burn it, mm-hmm. that was a thing. Right. When I found out how to do that, that's what I did. It was a rap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm making all type of stuff. What? I had my little slow jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had my rap stuff that I stuff that I play on when we on the bus going to another school to go see a yeah. team, get yeah. myself hyped or whatever. Yeah. All that stuff. All right. So, I was making them CDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cut that hair. When did you say, all right, uh, let me go ahead and try to take this to make this professional? When my mama was like, you need to go to Bob school because one of these days, somebody going to call the people on you. <laughs> and I was like, man. You had trap gonna... booby. Had right. Booby. I said, man, I ain't doing that. And after about two years after high school, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should go to Bob school. Mm. And that's when I did that. So this two years after, mm-hmm. you went to barber school. Mm-hmm. And then how long was how long is barber school? A year. A year? Mm-hmm. So did you learn more stuff in there, or is it like stuff you already knew, but they helped polish you? Hell no. Nah. It's just book work. Oh, it's book work. Yeah, you don't really learn nothing in barber school like that for real. You ain't cutting like... Yeah, you th- cutting, but you was cutting Africans, and by the time you <laughs> cut an African, you think you got a sharp taper, but you know, you put a little something sharp on them, it look like they tight, but you ain't, I ain't learned that much in barber school. Oh, uh, okay. So would you learn more like when you was out of barber school? Did you? I learned... I was cutting in a shop when I was almost finished with barber school. I learned... More at my first barbershop that I cut at. What shop was that? That was Corey Cuts. He's still cutting hair to this day. Corey. Corey Duval? No, not Corey oh. Duval. Light skin. He kind of brown skin short. I don't know who that is. You probably know if you see him. Probably if I see him. Yeah, so, shout out to Corey. Shout out to Corey, man. Yeah. You Because you put butt on. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> All right, so he, so you was in Corey's shop cutting without a license? Without a license. <laughs> Boy, you <he> was. <laughs> right. taking but I was almost finished. I was almost finished with school. So he was like, I'm going to let you cut in here until you get your license. Mm. So what, around what age were you at this time? 19. Oh, so about 19, mm. fresh out, cutting hair, no license, but mm. on the way to get the license. Right, right. So how long you stay at Corey's shop? I stayed there for about three years. Cutting hair? Cutting hair. You made good money at that time. Yeah, I was making good money. It was yeah. a hustle, but I I was getting it. Yeah. So if you so after Corey shop the three years, then where did you go? So this is the this is the flip side. So with a barber license, you got to pass your exam and get your license. Mm-hmm. So I failed the test twice by one point. Mm-hmm. And so something had happened where the shop had got shut down. Corey shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I'm at the house cutting. So I'm panicking because if you failed it the third time, you got to go back to school for them additional hours. Dang. So I just focused and studied every single day until I got my barber license. So you passed it on the third time? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, see, I, I wasn't playing. I passed on that third time. <laughs> Boy, see, I ain't playing. I ain't waiting around. <laughs> no, no. I couldn't go back to school for an additional yeah. 600 hours. Dang. So they'll send you back to school. Mm-hmm. So if you go back and do the 600 hours... Does that count? You still got to take the exam. You still got to take the exam. You got to do the process all over again. Oh, so they just reboot you and start all over. Mm-hmm. Damn, I didn't know that. Okay, so you passed the exam. Mm-hmm. Corey shop shut down. Mm-hmm. Then where did you go? I went uh, center stage. That's where, I, that's, that's, where that's where we met at, center yeah, stage. Center stage, yep. yeah. That's when I first cut my braids off. Yeah. I was looking for a barber. Yeah, yep. <laughs> center stage. Like, I can cut your hair off. All like, right. I don't know. It's, right, it's, right, it's, right. This guy get me right. Yeah, he got yeah. me right. I've been my barber what seven, six, seven years now. It's been. It's probably longer than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So center stage had like, and that place used to be packed. Yeah, we used to have that thing swinging for real. So at center stage, working the chair, like, did you ever uh, think about having your own barber shop, or was it just like? I'm going to just pay my booth rent and make my money. I never wanted my shop. I never wanted a shop. Never wanted a shop. Why is that? For me, it's too much of a headache. I didn't want to deal with other people. So I was like, nah, I, I'd rather just cut and leave. Right. So, because like, but you deal with people on the regular with the barbering. Because mm-hmm. like, I think as a barber, you definitely got to be like a people person. Yes. You can't just get in the chair mm-hmm. and then say what you're getting and then cut. Instead of more about that, right, way. right. It's like a, it's almost like a relationship. Yeah, it's like a relationship. A, you're like yeah. a therapist. I was just going to say that, mm-hmm. like therapy, like because you know we talk about some everything right, when right. I'm in the chair, man. 
about finances, about credit, about business, relationships, yeah, yeah. all type of stuff. Right. So is it has it been any point where you was like cutting somebody hair and like they probably telling you a story like that's personal. You like, damn, why are they telling me this? All the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. Do they feel like people feel cause I get that. I don't know why people like to just they mm-hmm. you know, tell me information that I'd be like, why are they telling me that? Mm-hmm. But I just, you know, it's between me and that person. Right, right, that. right. But what is it about, or what do you think it is about you that they feel like comfortable just? Just my personality. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm for the most part, I'm good to get along with, and you know, I can give you some advice. But they just need an ear just to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did the training part come into play? Man, the training part came in when I was at center stage. Mm-hmm. Um. I had met Mario Green. Shout out to Mario Green. Shout yeah. out Mario. You know what I'm saying? I met Mario and Young Money. Um, young. I got Young. You, we getting on, right, you on here right. next, bro. And uh, Mario, he had some clients that played basketball, and he just threw me out in the fire. Because everybody knew I hooped still. Mm-hmm. I was young still, yeah, hooping. He was like, uh, man, I'm looking for a trainer. And he just automatically said, hey, butter train your son. It was on the back of my mind. I'm like. I don't know what the hell I don't yeah. know what I'm supposed to do. So I, I just ran with it after that. I started training them outside of the barbershop. Yeah, I remember that too. Like right there in that uh, little walkway, yep. that patio yep. part. Yeah, outside. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Cat named Larry was my first client, and a cat named Kent was my two first clients. That was for basketball. Basketball, yeah. So you training them because Mario just threw you out there mm-hmm. in the fire. Mm-hmm. Did that ignite that in you like? Oh, I, I like this. Let me start getting Right. It, it was one of the things where I'm like, dang, all right, I'm going to show you what I know. And then they just kept coming and kept coming and words just started spreading. How did you get the, the – how did the NFL client or the um, pro athletes come? Man, for me, I'm 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 a go-getter. So I'm going to talk to you. So how I got – one of my first athletes was Winston, Winston Guy. Mm-hmm. That was my first professional athlete. And I came to him. I said, hey, man, um, I want to train you. And he was like, all right, cool, I'll let you train me. That's it. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, this joke is about to let me really train him. And it just went from there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Winston, man. Yeah. So, um, train Winston, that was your first professional, professional client. athlete mm-hmm. client. Did did he help bring you other clients, or did you just say, okay, I went to Winston and hollered at him, let me go holler at some other players in the city? Pretty much, just started reaching out to people. And they was down with mm-hmm. it. Well, I say, well, hey man, let me let me let me see, let, let's see if we can work out together. And yeah. I just started spending a little knowledge, and they're like, oh, you know what you're doing. Who who would you say is the one that you like trained with and saw the most like success from? Like, and maybe whatever you know when they was playing the actual game, and you like, dang, he really taking off this year. This he doing it, mm. and this from the training we did the, the summer. That's kind of tough, man, because a lot of people that I train, they they really, they really did their thing. So it's kind of hard to say just a one person. Is training because I don't have the patience for the training. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I commend right. trainers because it takes a lot of patience. Because you know how we work out. Like mm-hmm. when you saying go, I I'm going, and vice versa. It's like right. I ain't, I'm not gonna sit here and have no pity party. Oh, it's too heavy. This mm-hmm. that third. It's like I don't know that lingo. It's like just do it. Mm-hmm. Do you have that sometimes where you like God, this, you crying about this, doing this or doing? My patience this? was bad, and really how I kind of built my patience was uh, Jaren that owns Back to Basics. Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. out to Jaren and all the B two B guys. He the really cause he was we used to train together at uh, Planet Fitness, mm-hmm. and that's how we met. I met him through Reb. Shout out to Reb. Mm-hmm. I met him through Reb, and I'm like, man, this joke is so calm. He don't get mad about nothing. Yeah. And so I used to just kind of watch him and see how he do things, and then I just start picking off of him, like starting to gain some patience. Gain some patience. Mm-hmm. Did, that, did that increase clientele for you? Oh, it increased clientele, and also that's when women start coming. Yeah. And But then you I just – definitely got to have patience. Yeah, you got to have patience. And yeah. then after a while, my patience just started getting too bad. I was like, you know what, women <laughs> – it's not for me to train. Now, I do train women, I but you. not too many of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what? My target market is athletes. Mm. So you found your target market and stuck with that target market. Mm-hmm. And to this day, still doing that with the target market. Mm-hmm. So I see you with the kids, of course. Mm-hmm. Like we just talked about the other day. Um, so who you like training more? Is it 
those younger kids or the pro athletes? Mm. I would say younger kids because they like soaking sponges. Mm. So they really listen to you and they, you know, they, they willing to, to try stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes with the athletes, well, like the higher end athletes, they feel like they, feel like they already it. know it until you yeah. break them down. So you got to kind of stroke their ego for a little bit, but then you break them down. And that just takes time. But once they realize, you know what they're talking about, then they mess with you. So it's kind of like a reverse engineering process right. with the pro athletes. Right, like, right. Yeah, I'm going to stroke your ego for a minute, only right. to break it down. Exactly. So you can retain this information I'm Correct. trying to give you and feel comfortable to do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Then with the kids, it's like, we just want to learn. We want to get to the next level. We want right, to get to right. that place that he mm-hmm. at. So what I got to do? Right, right. I got you. I got you. So with what you have going on now, you got the barbering that you do, the uh, fitness training that you do. Uh, what's next? What, what, what's Butter trying to do next? No, nah, I'm... My thing is I'm I'm tapping into the online stuff because I got this vertical program that uh, I trained a young kid. He was in ninth grade, and he couldn't touch the rim or nothing. Mm-hmm. And I used to tell him and his pop, I said, trust me, I'm going to get you dunking. And by 11th grade, that's when he really started jumping. So I got that going on. Um, I, I needed you my ninth grade year. Who you telling? I needed me my ninth grade year. <laughs> I could touch the rim. <laughs> right. You know, he's just going out there you, every right, day. Right, right, right. I'm like, man, one of these days, I'm a guy. I ain't never done And back then, wasn't on YouTube. Yeah, no, so yeah, you yeah, really yeah. couldn't, yeah, you, you didn't can. know what to do. All I had was them, uh, with them shoes. Strength got the shoes. heels on the front. Walking around all day with the heels. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, before I even got the strength shoes, I had the jump soles. Yeah, the jump soles. The jump yeah. soles cheaper because you just put them on put your regular on, shoe because yeah, yeah. I couldn't afford no strength shoes. I didn't yeah. get strength shoes until I got grown. Yeah, I got the strength shoes about 11th grade. Yeah, they, they were like 130 that was out, Back of, then. out of East Bay. Yeah. Yeah, I got them out of East Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real hoopers know about them strength shoes. Yeah, about yeah. them strength shoes. So, with the pro, talk talk about the program you got though. So the vertical, so yeah. it's a it's a twelve week program. I got different exercises. You need no weights, and you're gonna do a series of exercises. And each week it goes up, mm. but you got to do it Monday through Friday, rest Saturday and Sunday, and it's a guarantee that you're gonna increase anywhere from six to twelve inches on your vertical. So six to twelve inches mm-hmm. for twelve weeks. Twelve weeks, five days a week. Mm-hmm. How how long in those five days? Like how long is the um time frame? So each week, just say like the first three weeks, it may only take you 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. But as but it, it goes on, it increases. So now you're talking about week seven, it, the workout may take you four to five minutes. Can that work for somebody that's my age? <laughs> Actually, it can. It can. Yeah, because all it is is body weight okay. stuff that we don't even think about, but you have to be consistent with it. I ain't trying to duck no more, but just in case I don't want to. Yeah, me wanna, either. Yeah, I just, I stay See, out the lane. Well, most people do well, is. I take that back. I go to the lane. I, you know how I play. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't dunking. I ain't going to the lane. Yeah. No. Most people, what they do is they see results in like six, seven weeks, and mm-hmm. they just stop. Oh, okay. I got you. So they done saw the results, and now they They stop. Like I'm but dunking. if you finish, you guarantee you're going to see a lot more. No, nah, I done saw the footage of some of them mm-hmm. keep people. I'm too, well, I'm 5'10". I saw something shorter than me out yeah. there doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Banging it. Yeah. So how did you come up with that, though? Because I used to do it when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. It was an old program that a friend of mine gave me, and I ran with it. Mm -hmm. So now, even with my clients now, sometimes I give them certain workouts, then I add a little weight to it. So now they really see it. Mm, I got you. Mm -hmm. So you got the vertical jump program going, the training. Any other programs you got? Um, not at this moment. Well, no, I do. I have another one that's a rehab recovery session. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've yeah. been seeing that. So mm-hmm. like, okay, so t- for a person that's trying to get, you know, that's working out, getting their body right and all mm-hmm. this other stuff, this would be a good way for you to put that out there. Hey, if you like what you're seeing, you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the notification button so you can get all the alerts when we drop the videos each and every week. We'll have a new guest on here talking about entrepreneurship, business, and everything in between. So make sure you stay tuned from A to Z. Uh, We're going to let you get back to it. Subscribe, like, share. All right, my doctor said it's two times the normal person. Mm-hmm. So I can eat, protein, work out, all this other stuff. I go play one game of basketball, I can lose five pounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What do you tell somebody that's having a problem keeping the weight? So I tell them you have to eat a lot. You have to eat like anywhere between four to six meals a day, mm-hmm. and you have to drink close to a gallon of water a day. 
and you have to eat a, like a lot of bread stuff like that and of course cut back on your cardio yeah that'd be my thing is the, the eating part that's that's the difficult part trying to eat Six times mm-hmm. a day or whatever. What's difficult for basketball players? Football players, they know they got to eat. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you're going to get towed up. Yeah. But see, that's the thing with basketball players because we're mine are not trained to eat a whole bunch of food. Mm-hmm. But you have to. Not many. You have to eat big portions, but a lot. A lot of, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, okay. So, let's do on the flip side then. You got somebody who is trying to, they're 250. Mm-hmm. They trying to get down. They trying to lose 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. What should they be doing? No sugar. Stay away from the bread, rice, a lot of carbs, stuff like that. No pasta. No sugar, none of that. Just should should they be consuming a gallon of water too? Yeah, you still supposed to. Anybody supposed to be consuming so they stay hydrated. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So with the consuming of the water, like, because I used to always think that's what they mean, meant by water weight. Mm-hmm. Is that correlating with the water weight or what is that? I mean, you're going to lose water weight regardless. Mm -hmm. So when people go and say, oh, I lost four or five pounds in a day, that ain't number water weight. Gotcha. But you need that water to flush all that stuff out. At the same Mm -hmm. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So with the, let's go back to the barbering real quick. What are you, what's your goal with that? Like, or cause you already said you don't want to open up Mm -hmm. your shop. So then what's the goal with? My goal is to become a millionaire without owning a shop, which is easy. Mm. Because I'm you can be a millionaire being a barber. Mm-hmm. That don't mean you gotta cut hair. Because I meet so many different people that opens the door through other things. Mm. So now if I have my shop, which ain't nothing wrong with shop owners, but that's what they do. I just wanna go in the shop, cut, but I get to meet so many people. So I it's a lot of people that I train and cut. So it's like cutting and networking mm-hmm. at the same time. Right, right. See you get a chance well I kind of get a chance to do that dealing with different people in business but you see people more than i mm-hmm. do in a day because we don't have that no more like school is gone right that right. was where you can meet everybody and talk to people mm-hmm. and be around people all the time and stuff like that we older now if, if i'm not at the shop i'm at the house right right you know what i'm saying and i'm sure you probably if you're not training or cutting probably at the house i'm at the house but you seeing people throughout the day mm-hmm. and using that as a way to like, if somebody come in there and they talking about credit, you learning something about that. Exactly. And then applying that stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's what you mean by, I could be a millionaire mm-hmm. from cutting hair, mm-hmm. not cutting hair per se. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be a millionaire behind the chair. Yeah, it's just the people you the people encounter. that you network. Right. Mm, I got you. Because I meet so many different people on yeah. different levels. Yeah. 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 So what would you tell the person that's trying to get into um, be a barber because they, you know, cut or whatever? Well, I would tell them master their craft because a lot of them, like, ain't nothing wrong with enhancements, which I use enhancements as well, but the using enhancements to cover up the haircut. Mm-hmm. Learn how to cut the hair first. first yeah. Then, you know, you can apply certain enhancements and, you know, just grind. You got to grind to meet them people and to get them people in your chair. Mm-hmm. But the goal, like I said in one of my old videos, is not, I don't want to cut. 20 heads no more i'd rather cut a solid five but if i'm getting 75 to 100 dollars on five heads yeah i got my whole day and i can do other stuff got you got you got you so i just want them to understand like you got to master your craft like from social media to saving your money Mm -hmm. and and just being a professional once you once you master that everything else will come all right so we know that they got to master their craft and not try to cover up the doggone haircut with the spray Mm-hmm. And liner and all that mm-hmm. other stuff. Really understand how to cut. Correct. So you can master your craft and then be professional with mm-hmm. it and put in the grind, save your money, mm-hmm. and re and invest, I guess, back into your stuff. Because, like, I know you always have, like, from the newer Clippers and all that other yeah. stuff. Is that something that, um, like, you know, I'm sure at times you probably don't want to be like, dang, I don't want to buy these clippers or whatever. But All you, the time. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to try it. Yeah, so yeah. that way, you know, like, I remember a long time, cordless, nobody want to mess with no cordless clippers, yeah. you know, but then you get that first pair. Oh, I'm going all cordless now. Yeah, yeah, you everything. know what I'm saying? So you got to try it. You got to invest in yourself. Got you. So what do you tell the person that wants to be a trainer? They trying to get into fitness as they think. Man, study. Mm-hmm. Study the body, um, know your tar- know who you want to target, and just you know keep talking to people. 
Keep asking, hey, man, let me work out with you. That's what I do now. Yeah. I ask person, man, let me work out with you. Man, you owe me two workouts. Bro. Yeah, I do. I do owe you two workouts. <laughs> two five, yeah. five, yeah, five, 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 five workouts. Five yeah. I'll be up tomorrow morning if you want to get it in. Yeah, we can might do up. that. Yeah. You, you go. No, I'm going to be up. <laughs> I, I got to get up. I can see your eyes that you go. I might be up early, about 4.30. You know, I'm up at 4. That's my time. 4.30, I'm, I'm up, man. Yeah. Once I get that word, once I talk to God, I'm ready to go. Yeah, we're going to do that tomorrow. Five, it, five to 5.30, bro. Well, I got I got to be at the, I got to at least leave by six, so I'm that's be up. that's cool. Yeah, I could be there at five. All right, bet. And then we get it in. Yeah, and we we just whatever you want to work on, man. Yeah, I'm I ready. did chest this morning, so whatever you want to do, it don't matter. It after don't that, we good. Yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> All right, so we know for a fact that cutting hair, you need to learn your craft, mm -hmm. perfect your craft, mm -hmm. and invest into yourself. Mm -hmm. Be professional. And then, as far as being a trainer, trainer is knowing the body, and knowing the body, Getting always the knowledge, studying, yep. yeah, all the stuff. So, what about um, what about like, do you have nutritious uh meals like plans, like stuff for people? That's funny because people ask me that all the time. Now, I do have meal plans, mm -hmm. but people, majority of people don't follow mm -hmm. because it's very strict. very strict. Yeah, and a lot of people not gonna follow. They say they're gonna follow, but they don't. Yeah. It's like I can't. It's sometimes it'd be hard to even get a person to drink a gallon of water. Nah, I feel you on that. That's me. Let me pause it. But so that's my problem too. Sometimes it's more so just the eating that five meals or something. It's like that. It's not really hard if you do it right. Like for an example, I you, tried to set my clock and all this. All you gotta do, it, like if you bring your lunch with you, right? I do that now. And you say you're going to eat breakfast, and a lot of times I say, like, oatmeal, banana, some type of fruit, and a protein shake, that's one. Mm -hmm. Okay, just say you want a snack, and you, don't, you ain't got no food, get you, eat you, like, two, three peanut butter jelly sandwiches. I say two. Mm -hmm. Eat you two peanut butter, that's going to hold you over. So about three, four, okay, you want a snack on something, get you, make you another peanut butter jelly sandwich. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, go get you something to eat. Gotcha. Which has substance. And what I mean by substance is stuff that's going to fill you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah not, not no French fries. And, right. Yeah, French fries. Right. And like, burgers, you get you a yeah. sweet potato. You get you some fish. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. All right, man. So, look, if you if you had any tips that you want to give an upcoming entrepreneur, um, what would you tell them? Because I, I got three questions for you. So, okay. we're going to start with that one. So, what I give them is... If you really want to do something, go all the way in with it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what anybody say, continue to do it and find other ways to do it. Because at the time when I was a, I was a barber, people used to laugh at me. Man, you you can't do both. Mm -hmm. And even people, when I tell them I do both, they're like, oh, you for real? Like, you can do both. Yeah. So I just say, stay down and just keep grinding. Keep gotcha. grinding. And then just, you know what I'm saying, get some knowledge. Sometimes you got to pay for knowledge and just go with it. What about the athlete, the younger athletes, that ones that are in high school that want to get to the next level, which would be collegiate, mm -hmm. and then after that go pro? What do you give? What advice do you give to that student athlete? Grind now. Do what you're supposed to now, because before you know it, you'll be a senior in no time. Quick. Take care of your body. Um, research certain stuff. Research schools. What school you want to go to. Set your goals high. And don't let no one tell you you can't do it. Because I played college ball, too, and people said I couldn't do that either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's what, and I was older when I played college. Yeah. I, I didn't go to college when I was 18. I went to college when I was, like, 20. Hmm. And I end up, I was a walk-on, and I ended up making a team. But you got in there because you were dead. Because I worked. Because yeah. how I did that, and I know we going back, but how I did that was I was cutting one of the players' hair. Hmm. And I told him, I said, man, um... I want to play for the school. He was like, okay, well, I'm going to let you know when the practice is. So um, he let me know when the practice, but I couldn't go in then. So what happened was I ended up cutting one of the coaches. Mm -hmm. And I told the coach, I said, man, I want to play. I want to play. And he looked at me crazy. He was like, well, this is what you got to do. You got to go to the guidance counselor, and you got to take three classes, and then we go from there. And, you know, he just kind of feed me some stuff, and I did that. And so then – I went back to my guy that was on the team, so he had let me know when they work out, so I started going to their workouts. Mm -hmm. A few times they used to say I couldn't get in, but I just kept coming, kept coming, and playing with them, and they were like, oh, he can play. And I just did that for like four months, ended up walking on. Mm -hmm. That's that grind. <laughs> That's the grind. You got to. If you really want it, you can get it. Yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go to this D1 school, but you can go to a community college school 
and then work your way up and to maybe in, a D2. Yeah. And even in the league, if you if you good enough or if you can't play in the league, you go overseas. But your first mindset should be, I'm going to the league. Mm. That's what's up, man. Hey, as y'all can see, this is why this is my homie, man. We get a chance to bounce ideas off of each other all the time, uh, constantly pushing each other too, man. And, and and on the real, bro, that's another reason why I got a lot of love and respect for you because um, when we talk, it's, it's you know we're joking all this other stuff, but it be it always gets something out of mm-hmm. when we talk. You know what I'm saying? Or just um in us when we go have lunch or something like that. It's always something to where we getting a chance to bounce off of each other, mm-hmm. different ideas and th- different things we could be doing to help our businesses grow and flourish to the next level. So it's just like you said with the therapy, like a personal therapist for as the barber. Mm-hmm. You don't even know that, but that's how it kind of seemed when I when I got in your chair on mm-hmm. the very first time. Mm-hmm. He was talking to me, talking to me, trying to figure out what's going, you know, who I am, what mm-hmm. I got going right, on, right, this right. time the third, and it just made me feel more comfortable. Like, okay, this is a cool person, because I'm not, I don't accept friends like that. Right, you know right, what I'm right. It's like my friends are my friends from like home and a couple people I know mm-hmm. in my circle so small. Right, right, you right. Know? So like. I really appreciate you just being that type of individual because mm-hmm. it rubs off on a lot of people. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So just want to, I want to give you flowers. I oh, mean, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I want to you flowers, uh, man. I appreciate it. But um, yeah, this has been another episode, man, from A to Z. You know, I got my boy Darius Epkins, a.k.a. Butter, Butter Bean. Um, how can they reach you if they trying to get a haircut, if they trying to um, get get some So physical- if you if anybody want to get a haircut, you can go to my website, www. Butterbean, B U T T A Bean dot com. If you want some training sessions, um, all you got to do is either uh, you can email me uh, by Mr. Darius 11 at yahoo dot com or just hit me up on social media or even call my phone or text my phone 904 651 0195. Serious about oh, this, yeah. man. On that note, we up out of here, man. This has been another episode from A to Z. Make sure you subscribe, like, click that notification button, man. We'll see you next week. We out of here. Yes, sir. 